And welcome to the Cardinal's Nest here on HBC Channel 25. Dean Beckman here, and uh, this is the first show of what we believe is our ninth season of doing the Cardinal's Nest here on HBC. Dean Beckman along with uh, co-host uh, Donnie Netto, the Sports Information Director for St. Mary's. This is a show devoted exclusively to St. Mary's University, primarily its, primarily its athletic program, but certainly we touch on other issues as well as we will today, Donnie, but we're excited to be back for a ninth season and uh, we'll be discussing the St. Mary's University Centennial, which is why I brought up our ninth anniversary of this show. It's 100 years for the university Absolutely. this year. Absolutely, and as an, an alum of St. Mary's, it's an exciting time for me and, and for St. Mary's in general, and, and uh, we're looking forward to a lot of fun things that are going on on campus. and, and uh, you know, it should be a, a great year, a celebration of our first 100 years. Yeah. And to honor and discuss our centennial at St. Mary's, we have the co-chairs of the Centennial Committee. We have uh, Steve Titus with us. Uh, Steve is a co-chair, also uh, the Senior Vice President for University Advancement, and Michael Sharon joining us. Michael is uh, the Dean for the School of the Arts at St. Mary's, co-chairing the Centennial Committee along with Steve. And guys, uh, it had to be an honor to be named co-chairs for the Centennial Committee. And uh, Michael, uh, you're uh, uh, an alum of St. Mary's, and so that's special as well. Tell us what it means uh, to each of you to be named co-chairs for this committee. Well, it was um, a great honor for me. I was very moved when I was asked. Uh, I'm a graduate of the class of 79, and as someone who uh, I, I'm, I'll tell anybody who asks that um, my life was changed by St. Mary's. I was transformed by my experience at St. Mary's. So to be asked to be part of the centennial celebration uh, means a, 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 mm -hmm. a lot to me. So yeah, Great. And Steve, how about you? Well, the same. I mean, I think the opportunity, it was interesting. We began the planning uh, really in uh, 2010. In fact, Michael was part of an early visioning group that had done some work uh, in early 2010. So when I arrived at St. Mary's in 2010, this was my first uh, assignment. And uh, in fact, uh, the president had received a recommendation from the vision committee that Michael was a part of, held, off, uh, held, held on to it until I arrived. And uh, my first day, that, this is what I got. And so the last uh, two years has been, uh, it's been a real privilege because, and, and being a newcomer to the university, what's been wonderful is it's a great way to learn about the university and its history. And, and all that's happened in its first century, the impact that it's had in thousands and thousands of, of lives. And then to be able to take that and then carry that forward to really contemplate the second century, you know, and then really develop strategy around that uh, for how we launch into the second century and, uh, and continue to have this transforming heritage that the university is all about. So it's been fabulous. Well, and I want to touch on that educational component yes. because that had to be difficult from a committee standpoint. How do we communicate mm. all of the things and all of the major achievements, <coughs> accomplishments, and events that have occurred over those 100 years? But I think, in a way, uh, you've done a good job of that because you have uh, uh, been able to break down the year with various major events and of course it all started with the birthday celebration last June and uh, I went to that it was a terrific event you got in all of those educational components and birthday cake to boot so tell us a little <laughs> yeah. bit more about that event uh, we had uh, the flag, the United States flag that was uh, flying over the Capitol there so just give us a little more detail about that June event well I mean and the first thing that we went about doing was to your point you know how do you how do you take a, a century and, <laughs> uh, and pack it into 12 months? Uh, and, and not only the first century, but then also talk about the second century. So what we went about doing was building a framework uh, to tell this story. And, and that framework is really um, around four key things. And the first is our founding and that relationship with the Diocese of Winona, you know, the university given mm -hmm. birth by the, the diocese. And that time, that 1911, 1912 period in uh, Winona was a very was a very prolific time relative to education. Uh, then from there, of course, 1933 when the Christian Brothers took over the university. Then in 1969 when it became co-ed and women joined um, the university. And then in 1984 when uh, the university's graduate programs uh, really matured. And then we became with the the schools of graduate and professional programs. So that became our framework mm -hmm. uh, for telling the story of the, the, the first century. And, uh, and then, you want to share a little bit about the first event? 
Well, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun because, uh, you know, we had a date. We knew when the, uh, you know, we had, it, what's great about 1912 is that we have photos from the time. Right. And so we have some amazing photos from 1912 and when, uh, you, know, the, you know, Bishop Heffern laid the cornerstone. And uh, mm -hmm. we, have, we have actually the trowel they used <laughs> and, and everything. So yeah. it was great. And, and the event was held right outside that original building. Yeah, so. it's, uh, it was uh, a lot of fun. We had a lot of people, uh, a lot of people there. Um, the rain held off. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, you could uh, see people. Uh, it was a beautiful day to start off, and as the rain clouds coming in, you could see people sitting there in the crowd. <laughs> that you could almost see them <laughs> doing hail marys. You know, and uh, it worked out perfectly. Mm -hmm. And we had um, uh, confetti, and and uh, it was uh, it was really uh, yeah. quite a fun event. It was really exciting mm -hmm. to be a part of. And you've kind of fe felt that sense of history because I mean, right that very spot was there. everybody had gathered. You know, 100 years ago, sure. almost to the day. Yeah. So. To the day, yeah. and and one of the key, um, the key things that we wanted to communicate that day was that St. Mary's University is Winona's university, mm -hmm. uh, and so um, as you may have seen uh, from the spring and then over the summer, uh, the invitation to participate and be a part of that event, the, the cornerstone commemoration, you know, the laying of the cornerstone, the beginning of the university. Uh, it was the entire Winona community that was invited to this event. Uh, and so, and that is really important to us, that, mm -hmm. uh, that this community know that uh, we are blessed with really two wonderful universities. Um, and, uh, and that St. Mary's University uh, is as much, this, this community's university mm -hmm. as, uh, as Winona State. I mean, you know, we've, this community has such a commitment to education and the arts, and we're privileged to be a part of that. So that was one thing. And then the other thing was it, it coincided with our uh, alumni weekend as well. And so we did some very special things that evening to recognize our distinguished alums that was a little bit different than what we had mm -hmm. done in, in the past. And, uh, and I think what we learned, one of the big learnings is, you know, the St. Mary's Park, as we called it. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a, an area of the university that we don't use as, probably as much as we could. Mm -hmm. And I think it just sparked a different kind of energy, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, in yeah. terms of, uh, and with the tents, and then, of course, the cake was, we had 500 cupcakes uh, <laughs> there, and I'm pretty sure there are only two or three left. Right. Uh, so it went, so it went In well. my freezer. Yeah, my, yeah, Michael's freezer. So, yeah, it was good. It and was then good. the, the uh, first uh, major event on our campus was, of course, the convocation, uh, Bishop uh, Quinn, received yes. an honorary doctorate and and to me as an alum and, and being at that mm -hmm. uh, convocation I really thought it energized the student body there were a lot of students there a lot of faculty and staff talk a little bit about uh, mm -hmm. getting our our community involved in in our hundred years because really to me that was the first thing that they kind of experienced right. that was about our centennial well we we owe such a great uh, you know debt of gratitude to uh, to the diocese and I think it was important for us to kick off our academic year we pulled in all our academic units from around the the region to come to Winona and it was a time to um, to honor the diocese and to honor Bishop Quinn himself another bishop who's committed to education he's actually a professor for us so um, mm -hmm. so uh, you know we started with Bishop Heffron who uh, was the right person at the right time just came he's so committed to education and uh, you know he started Cotter High School. He started the College of Saint Teresa. He started Saint Mary's. He started high schools in Rochester and all over the area. So uh, this connection to education and to the diocese was really important to commemorate. It was really fun because we uh, we had uh, two of our uh, professors in the music department have written original music that was commissioned uh, mm -hmm. and debuted at this event. Uh, and uh, we had members of uh, the community, you know. Uh, and uh, from the, we had priests from all over the diocese there, so it was uh, really great to bring everybody together and, and start off our academic year in the right way. Well, and Michael, at the family weekend coming up in early October, yep. there will be more debuts, especially from uh, the School of the Arts, including one of your own, correct? Right. <laughs> uh, we've, uh, <clears throat> we're putting together uh, an arts celebration where we're, we're including um, full concert band, a choir, and theater, and visual arts. So. Um, uh, Brother Rod Robertson, who's been at the university for 40-some years, has done a huge piece of visual art that commemorates the 100 years uh, of the university, and uh, that will be unveiled 
uh, the weekend of October 5th. And uh, we'll, and uh, I've written a play. I spent a lot of time this summer <laughs> in the archives. Um, it was uh, quite a, a huge learning experience for me, but also emotionally as well, because uh, mm -hmm. to hold the handwritten letters and to, you know, to learn that, um, you know, that our beloved Bishop Heffron uh, was living on campus and he, and he passed away on campus in mm -hmm. his residence saying the Hail Mary. Mm -hmm. And to, to read that account and, and many of the things that I learned over the course of summer writing this play um, has been quite inspirational to me, and I was already pretty inspired. So, sure. mm -hmm. and, and Steve, mm -hmm. actually, before we even get to the family weekend in October, we have a big event uh, here in September in Chicago. As uh, that's uh, it, one of the things when I get asked about St. Mary's out in the community, one of the things they say is, uh, "How many students do you have from Chicago?" Mm -hmm. uh, they always want to know that. Talk about mm -hmm. our Chicago alumni, and we have such a strong connection to Chicago. So, tell us about that uh, Chicago event coming up. Yeah, I mean. You know, the events, we, we've got um, about seven major events over the course of the year. Uh, the, uh, that first one we talked about is really about celebrating the university and the Winona community. The second one really lifting up the diocese and, and really connecting to these relationships. Uh, and also, uh, the, the one in August is bringing our whole university together. So mm -hmm. it sort of speaks to this a bit. Most people don't realize that this university is 6,000 students strong, mm -hmm. uh, that we've got campuses here and, uh, and a campus in the Twin Cities and, and centers in Minnetonka, Apple Valley, Oakdale, Rochester, a campus in Nairobi, Kenya, and a significant education program in, in Jamaica. Uh, and so this is a very dynamic place. And so this is an opportunity, and, and you may have seen with all of the international flags that we had on stage in August, to represent the impact and reach of this uh, of this university, it's it's just awesome, and uh, and Chicago was part of that, you know, and from the early days uh, of the university, really about uh, particularly uh, mid uh, 20th century, I don't know what the number was, but it had to be close to maybe half of the students were coming from oh, yeah, Chicago. Easily. So if you if you look at if, if you think of it this way, St. Mary's University has 40,000 alums, 17,000 of whom are undergraduate alums, 23,000 are graduate alums. Of those 17,000 undergraduate alums, about s between seven and 8,000 come from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Huge, uh, just a, a, a we had our We had our own Amtrak cars wow. from, coming yeah, from Chicago. What, they actually had a St. Mary's banners <laughs> up in Chicago yeah. for all the students, and we had our own cars and everything for the longest time. Mm -hmm. So next summer, we'll actually have Amtrak cars bringing people from Chicago back to uh, Winona. So the event uh, that's coming up on September 22nd uh, will be in Millennium Park. Mm -hmm. And we expect uh, to have uh, about uh, between 800 and 1,000 uh, of our closest friends in <laughs> Chicago uh, to join us. And uh, the president will be there, uh, Father uh, Fabian, uh, who's a beloved uh, uh, philosophy professor at St. Mary's is uh, will receive the uh, the presidential Mer uh, medal of uh, of merit uh, there and then uh, also John McDonough who's the president and CEO of the uh, Blackhawks and an alum of ours will be one of the honorary co-chairs as well Mary Dempsey a 75 graduate of uh, the university and uh, and we've had a great volunteer committee in Chicago that has just put this together this will be something that uh, that the university has probably not seen uh, in its first century in terms mm -hmm. of uh, the impact of this event. So we'll be looking forward to seeing you guys there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. In June, it, it kind of comes to a, to a close, uh, so to speak. But uh, for you guys, and as Brother William always talks about, it's, it's, it's great to you know, remember these 100 years, but we always look forward to the next 100 as well. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about the, the closing of our centennial celebration in June uh, on our Winona campus and also what we're looking for uh, for the next 100. Yeah, We're kind of looking at it as, <coughs> as uh, not so much a closing but a launch. So uh, with all the events that happen on that weekend and of course the community will be invited out and everything, and we, we culminate with uh, a huge fireworks demonstration mm -hmm. that you'll probably see from all over, <laughs> all over town. But we consider that to the kickoff of the next hundred years that, uh, you know, we're going to start with a bang, literally. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, so after September, October, we'll have the Board of Trustees in, and then we'll have the Family Weekend, the debut of, of the arts that Michael's been so instrumental in, in uh, 
helping to, uh, to move forward. And then in March uh, of 2013, we'll have our first all alumni reunion at our schools of graduate and professional programs at our Twin Cities campus. Uh, that will be a pretty remarkable event. And then in June uh, will be, as Michael said, sort of this premiere of the, uh, of the second century. And, um, and I think that... Uh, and it will be an all-class reunion, too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we'll celebrate anniversaries, yeah, but that's every, right. every student, every alumnus and every student from every class, mm -hmm. is, we want to come back and, mm -hmm. and say, boy, that was a great hundred years, but look what we're going to do right, now. Right. Let's go get yeah. it. And, you know, and part of that is the work that the university has been up to this last year with the strategic plan uh, as we uh, contemplate. Uh, you know, we've got more national events that we've scheduled this year, about 13. So the president, myself, and, uh, and uh, Meg Rickman, who's our, so our assistant vice president for alumni relations, but also our centennial director. She's probably the one that should be sitting here, not Michael <laughs> and I. She's, uh, she's been doing incredible, incredible work. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, the three of us will be traveling around the country this year, engaging with our constituents, our friends, benefactors, and alums. Uh, to celebrate the centennial, and then also to uh, roll out the strategic plan and share with people the priorities and initiatives of this university as it begins its second century. Mm -hmm. uh, before we close out, we have a few minutes left in this segment. I have a, more of a personal question for each of you, including you too, Donnie, so hang on. But uh, <laughs> Steve, we'll start with you. As, as Senior Vice President for University Advancement, you have an opportunity to not only tell the St. Mary's story, but also hear the St. Mary's story from alumni. What, what has that experience been like for you? It's been a little overwhelming in this way. You know, I mean, I've, I've had the privilege of working at a number of dis different institutions and engaging with alumni. And I have to tell you that, that the, what I hear here, it's just different. And I, like Michael was saying early on when his own experience, um, and Donnie, I don't know what your experience is, but this thing about St. Mary's changed my life. St. Mary's saved my life. St. Mm -hmm. Mary's, you know, there has been such a, um, you know, such a discernible and real impact for people. And, uh, and I mean, it's a theme. I hear it so often. Uh, and so, and when you hear that and when you spend time with people and, and the things that they've done and the commitment they continue to have to St. Mary's, it really touches you. Mm -hmm. um, and it really provides, uh, I mean, it really pr provides a sense of hope and optimism uh, because the university, um, I mean, without our students, uh, we don't exist. Yeah. And that's why we exist. And without our alumni and friends, uh, we don't exist. And so the investments that they make in the university are, are key. And so, uh, and I hear that from students too, you know, I mean, so this tradition is continuing. Yeah. Well, and Donnie, we'll go to you next. Mm -hmm. St. Mary's has been your life. It's been your family's life. Yeah, you know, um, Steve really hit it as good as you can. Is it, there's a, St. Mary's is a special place. Uh, you know, I graduated from here in 85 and met my wife and married my wife, who was a student with me. Uh, both of my children have gone through St. Mary's, and my son's wife went through St. Mary's. And, and uh, I've worked here for 18 years, and uh, I couldn't think of a place that I'd much rather work than than St. Mary's. It's a great place. The, the, the faculty and the staff are unbelievable. You know, you, you mentioned Brother Rod. Brother Rod taught me when I was in school here, and, and uh, so there's great people. Father Fabian, you know, mm -hmm. the story that everybody hears, your first day of class, you go into class, and Father Fabian will say, Mr. Neto, how are you today? And, and I'd never met him before in my life, and he knew who I was, and, and so it's just that, you know, it's, it's a great place. And um, you know, this weekend, not to completely change subjects, but the Cardinal M Club has their weekend. Chris Kendall's being inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame, another one of those people that's been around for a long time mm -hmm. and, and, and is another one of those people that just, there's something about St. Mary's that, 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 that mm -hmm. keeps you here and makes it so that you really don't want to go anywhere else. Right. And Michael, you graduated in 79. Yeah. What With is Chris, it like for you to see well, the university reach this point 100 years as strong as it is and with so much uh, still to come? Well, for me, I, you know, I graduated from, uh, from high school, and, uh, you know, my mom raised three boys uh, by herself uh, working the graveyard shift, and I really came out of high school thinking I was a lump of coal, and uh, just really didn't have a great sense of self, and when I came to St. Mary's, the type of, you know, the personal attention that I got, and, and basically the message they told me is, Mike, you're not a lump of coal, you're a diamond, we just need to dust you off a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you know, being part of commemorating um, the long tradition of, you know, because I've written this history, I've seen time after time 
uh, people's lives changed, transformed. I mean, that's the word we really uh, grabbed onto uh, as part, you know, trans, uh, transforming heritage is what we're calling the centennial celebration. And the people's lives that were transformed by the right people landing in the right place at precisely the right time. And it can't be anything else but divine providence. I mean, I just saw it story after story as I read it. It said, this can't be coincidence. Mm -hmm. This can't be chance. Clearly, God is working in, you know, in, here in Winona mm -hmm. and at St. Mary's University. And, and just one last thing. Sure. I, I think, you know, part of that heritage, and I think what is so key to the strength of the university is um, the relationship with the Christian brothers and that Lasallian charism. Uh, there is such a quality and a commitment, uh, or a commitment to quality of education, and the sense of, <clears throat> of, the, and the commitment to, develop, to developing the whole person, uh, and I feel that in a more palpable way here than any other place that that I've been, and I think that's in my own experience uh, here at St. Mary's is what gives it its richness, its robustness, and it's really its sense of. Uh, of identity and its sense of quality. And it certainly will continue mm -hmm. as, as we continue on. So, uh, Steve Titus, Michael Sharon, thank you so much, co-chairs for this year's uh, Centennial Committee. And uh, you've been busy, you'll continue to be busy, so thanks for taking time out uh, and joining us here on the Cardinal's Nest. Thanks, right. guys, and yeah. thanks for your good work. It's a labor of love. Thanks That's all right. All right, stay tuned. Donnie and I will return and we'll discuss St. Mary's athletics when we come back here on HBC. You know, we're doing things in bus magazines and the newspapers and things like that. And it's just like we seemed like we needed a different media. And we thought, you know, TV, perfect. Laura, she is awesome. She came out the first time. She was very, very personable. Tends to your needs. I mean, anything that you needed, she was right there. I literally, seriously, have been wanting to make more commercials just because it was such a great, fun process. I would recommend HBC to anybody. Call Laura for details on how to get a free commercial for your business. How many times in business have you heard this? Your network consultant says your computers are slow because your internet speeds are slow. Then, your service provider says it's not the internet speed, your computers and network are at fault. So which is it? Well now with HBC's professional services, you don't have to deal with the blame game anymore. We can take care of everything for your business. From designing an entire network to installing a new printer, HBC is here to help keep your business running smooth. Check us out on the web at hbci.com or give us a call at 888-474-9995. So you know how some cable companies have these bundle deals where if you purchase their TV, telephone, and internet together, you save? At HBC, we're taking it one step further. Get your TV and phone service through HBC, and we'll give you internet absolutely free. That's right, free. And you still save money. Some packages can save you up to $660 a year, and it's all backed by our 30-day guarantee. The best part? Free internet is available to all customers, new and existing. Go to HBCI.com to see which free internet package is right for you, or call 888-474-9995. We are a small town store. Everything relies on our internet, our pumps, our registers, everything. So we need somebody that is willing to go that extra mile for us. Jill is awesome. She is very personable. When we call them, they react to us as if we are top on their list. And to me, that is number one. I've had excellent service. Call Jill and find out what excellent business service is like. Now is the time to take advantage of unlimited data from HBC Mobile before time runs out. Unlimited data will no longer be available after September 30th, so you must hurry. All new customers that sign up with a two-year contract receive voice service free for three months. Don't miss your chance to receive unlimited data before time runs out. Stop by and see me at the HBC Wizard Building at 67 Main Street, downtown Winona, and sign up before September 30th. Don't miss this great deal from HBC Mobile. And we're back here to wrap things up on the Cardinals' Nest. Thanks for watching here on HBC Channel 25. Dean Beckman, Donnie Netto. And uh, Donnie, as you alluded to in the previous segment uh, when we were talking about the centennial, it is also uh, M Club weekend, as if there isn't enough going on <laughs> at St. Mary's. Uh, M Club weekend, of course, uh, the weekend where uh, all of uh, the athletes 
from past and current seasons are invited to campus and uh, uh, they have a Hall of Fame awards ceremony, all kinds of golf outings and alumni reunion games and things of that nature. So uh, tell us about uh, uh, the Hall of Fame inductees for this year. You mentioned Chris Kendall already. Yeah, it's, you know, like you mentioned, it's a crazy weekend and, and really a, a fun weekend for us. It's something that, uh, you know, we've done now. This is our 10th anniversary of uh, M Club weekend and one of the big signature things that we do is is our Hall of Fame induction and and as I mentioned in the in the first segment, uh, Chris Kendall, a class of '79, is one of the three inductees this year. Chris was an outstanding baseball player, as well as uh, he coached baseball and, and was an assistant coach under Max Moloch, and has served in so many different uh, uh, areas for the university. And, and uh, as a friend of his, I'm very I'm very proud to, to to see him be inducted on Friday night. And then you've got Ann Erickson, who's a, a goalkeeper for the women's soccer team. She was a an '89 graduate and uh, she's being inducted as well as Alex Kugel who played for the men's soccer team and he's a 99 graduate. Some people may know Alex's dad Roger is uh, uh, was on staff at, uh, at St. Mary's and, and so those three will be inducted on Friday night and then Saturday we've got our, our annual golf outing which is a lot of fun. A lot of alums come back uh, there's about uh, almost 30 foursomes that will be playing in that uh, on Saturday. And then on Sunday, the, uh, the alums get to lace them up or, or uh, <laughs> however you want to look at it. Some of them may not want to lace them up, but uh, we've got several uh, alumni events, uh, alumni games going on. Hockey is having one and, uh, and uh, volleyball and tennis and swimming. And, uh, you know, it's just a crazy, a crazy Sunday uh, morning and, and people have a lot of fun. And, and uh, we're looking forward to a, a, great, uh, a great weekend there. Yeah, no question. And you had brought up uh, Chris Kendall. Um, you know, he has been a guest here on the Cardinals Nest for a variety of reasons over the, the nine years we've been doing the show. You will not find anyone... I'm almost certain who doesn't like Chris Kendall. I mean, he uh, he knows so much about the university. He treats everyone with such respect. He's a vice president for the university now, and uh, uh, good to see him honored for his athletic accomplishments, which newer people to St. Mary's might not know about. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, and, and you really hit it right on the head. There is not a person uh, around that does not like Chris. He's always mm -hmm. got a smile on his face, and 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 in times when sometimes it's not easy to have right, a smile on right. your face, and and uh, you know Chris is one of those people that uh, can can excel at anything uh, he drove race cars for a while uh, formula V race cars and became one of the tops in his in his uh, class in terms of driving race cars he's a, one of those people that'll uh, hang glide he'll parachute he'll fly a plane and everything that he does is is with this gusto and this you know he's going to do it uh, as to the best of his ability and and that's why he played baseball and you know I've talked to people that played with him uh, Bob Beeble was one of them and uh, you know there's there's not a guy that would give you more uh, than than Chris would and you know he'd give you the the shirt off his back if mm -hmm. if you asked him for it and and it's a it's a super huge honor for him and and uh, you know like I said before I'm really happy to see him uh, honored this way mm -hmm. and, and I'm actually looking forward to uh, his acceptance speech. I asked him to please include one Max Moloch <laughs> impersonation, and I'm hoping he follows through yeah. on that. Donnie, about a minute left in the show. Uh, next week, we'll have Mike Lester, head volleyball coach on the program, and one of his athletes. Uh, a tragedy over the summer, though. A serious uh, uh, injury occurred to Sabrina Bushlack, uh, who was involved in a car accident. She played for St. Mary's and uh, uh, so won't be on the team this year due to the uh, injury suffered in that car accident. But it's another example of the St. Mary's University, how close-knit it is coming together and supporting Sabrina in so many ways. No question. There have been so many ways. There is a you know, Facebook page that was created for people that they could communicate with Sabrina, and people are selling uh, uh, wristbands with, uh, with Team Bree on it. And, and uh, everybody is, is you know, at, at such a loss because Sabrina was such an outstanding person and just a, a, a great part of our, our St. Mary's community. I know that uh, the volleyball team has, has named her one of their captains this year and and they do have her jersey on the bench uh, for all of their matches she certainly uh, isn't there in 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 on the court but she certainly is there in spirit yep. and, and everybody that's uh, that's known Sabrina knows that uh, she's a fighter and uh, you know she'll be back and and uh, probably you know with that s uh, amazing smile of hers on her face absolutely so we'll talk to Mike and uh, volleyball player on next week's show and recap st. Mary sports that's gonna do it for the Cardinals nest thanks for watching on HBC